All right, all praise to the most, most high, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, enough respect to the brothers preaching the truth worldwide. I came across this video last night. Um, it's entitled, Two Toddlers Embrace on Sidewalk Goes Viral, right? I'm going to play it for you now. This, you know, check it out. My friend, you are just adorable. people that's that's really what you want to see let's just bring about halfway here that's this is really what you all want to see now that the truth is coming out you so-called white people you edomites right which uh esau so-called white man and then you have jacob negroes latinos native americans they're uh uh sworn enemies okay created to be enemies they were not never you know here to be together in peace they're going to always be enemies, no matter what. So when people see things like this, they always want to make a big deal about it. Because this is really what you want. Through the spirit, you all know you're being condemned. Talking about you Edomites. And a lot of you wicked niggas too. You know that these people are being condemned through the spirit of the Lord. That they're already condemned anyway. But that the spiritual, their judgment is being prophesied about. And you got a bleeding heart towards them. So when you see things like this, you, you big it up in society. You push it up. You think some kind of way you coming together with them is going to thwart their judgment, but it's not quite the opposite. This shows us that you know that through the spirit you have you have been convicted and know you are the Edomites, that you're going into slavery. You're going to pay for the crimes you committed on so-called Negroes. And you, and you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans that try to come in and be uh, at peace with Esau, he's going to kill you on this side, which is going to be judgment from the Heavenly Father. And you're gonna, and if that don't happen, you're gonna be destroyed in the final judgment. The nuclear missiles, when they come and burn America, Babylon the Great, and in the next world, you're gonna be against these devils because you were never created to be at peace with each other. And then, as a matter of fact, this video is gonna be entitled "Esau's Vain Vision of Peace." That's what he pushes on you people in the in the world. You worldly people, you know the the, the citizens of Babylon the Great and people of the world, you want to see peace. But behind the scenes, the elites don't give a fuck about the Israelites. They don't care nothing about you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. They don't care about you. They, they're, they're preparing to uh, bring forth the judgment of the Lord on two-thirds of the house of Israel. They really want to kill all, all Israelites. But see, also, but and that's the elites of Edom, but the elites of Jacob, the elect, we're preparing through the Spirit to bring judgment on Esau according to the Heavenly Father's word. We're preparing that spiritual, in the spirit, we're preparing judgment. We, we're prophesying against you, and the Lord is going to come, and He's going to do the literal bringing of judgment. Let's get a couple of scriptures. The first one we'll bring out is Matthew 10 and verse 34. It says this Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And that's both the, the, the Savior is going to come, and He's going to bring the sword to Esau. Because he's from the tribe of Judah. And, and, and if you read in Isaiah 63, which I'm just going to go there and show it to you, but I'm not going to read it. <coughs> the Savior's from the tribe of Judah, which is Jacob, one of the tribes of Jacob. And he's going to come and bring the sword to his brother Esau. As you see right here in Isaiah 63 and 1. And I got to read it. Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness might have to save. That's the Lord. Wherefore thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. I have trodden the wine press alone and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. So you see, 
And as you go on to verse 6, verse 6, it says, And I will tread down the people in mine anger and make them drunk in my fury and will bring down their strength to the earth. What people is he going to do? What people is he going to take vengeance on? It tells you in the, ver in the first verse, the people of Edom. So Jacob and Esau are never going to be at peace. And also, even in your own families, verse 35 says, For I am come to set, Matthew 10, 35, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his own household so even with that the lord is not even uniting all people in their own house now let's go back to the beginning because jacob and esau they were raised or they were uh prophesied and conceived to be polar opposites and they will be enemies forever never to be united in peace so you can keep playing all the little you know oh it's so beautiful look at the little children that don't make no difference hey, but you see who pushed it all up homosexuals you can hear the guy in the background I, I don't even remember what the guy said but you know he is as such this is romans 9 verse 11 for the children being not yet born i started verse 10 salakia and not only this but when rebecca also had conceived by one even by our father isaac for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Right, before the children was ever born, one was created to be the good, and the other was created to be the evil. But before they ever did any good or evil, it didn't matter. The Lord had ordained what they would do. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? Yahweh forbid. You can't call the Most High unrighteous because he loves Jacob and hates Esau. That's the way he chose to set it up. Polar opposites. One to be the righteous, the other to be the wicked. And that's just what it is. And you people can't change that. It says, it goes further. It says, for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that showeth mercy. For, this script, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. You see? Now I'm going to jump down a bit, as you know, for lack of time. Verse 21 says, This hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. And that's what you have right here. And you, as children, they don't know no better. They're just doing what children do naturally, playing. But those of you out there that want to use this and make it, you know, you can keep trying to push this vain vision of peace all you want to. It's never going to happen. The new world order is going to fail, right? You may get it started up, but it's going to fail before it's ever, ever completed. The Lord is going to come back, and he, from the tribe of Judah, the line of Judah, is going to put judgment and the sword on his brother Esau, which really is no longer our brother's. Okay, you're really not because you're the polar opposite, you're the wicked brother. If you want to say that, what if the most high willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that's you, you so called white people, you Edomites, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. You see. And that's you so-called, again, you Edomites, man. And that's just what it is. Even if you go back to Genesis, uh, two nations, it's said in the scriptures, two nations was in Rebekah's womb. And as we see from Romans, one nation is the wicked, the other is the righteous. Esau, the so-called white man, is the wicked nation. Jacob is the righteous. They're never going to be at peace. How can two polar opposites come together? If you have the north end and the south end of a magnet, when you try to push them together, they just push apart. Genesis 25, 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. You are two distinct, separate nations, and you're never going to get along. Peace has no communion with, with, uh, with unrighteousness, or uh, peace has no, no communion with war, you know? Righteousness and unrighteousness cannot get along. They're never going to be able to coexist. You see, now you need both for balance, but they're not going to, they're not going to coexist. Peace can't prevail if war is there. Neither can war prevail if peace is there. 
Let's read that. This is um something, you know, similar to that. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Be ye not unequally together. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? And what concord hath Hamashiach with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Right, you see it? Light and darkness can have no communion. Felt, you know, righteousness and unrighteousness cannot have fellowship Neither will the wicked and the righteous ever get along It's never going to happen That's not the way the Lord set things up And I got to speed up a little bit here you No know? I got to speed things up here a little bit Let's read this one This is Proverbs 11 and 1 A false balance is abomination to the Lord But a just weight is his delight Right and the Lord is all balanced You people love to say God is love God is love Well you know what and not only love, he's got a, a wide a range of, of other emotions that make him balanced. And some of those are hate, just like he hates Jacob, loves Esau. He, he created light and dark, sweet and bitter, up and down, night and day. You see? So it's never, it's never going to be, you know, a false balance with the Most High. It's always going to be balanced. Proverbs 20, 23, diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord. And a false balance is not good. There you go. You know, plain and simple. Now let's read this. Ecclesiastes 37 and 16 says this. Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. The countenance is a sign of changing of the heart. Four manner of things appear, good and evil, life and death. But the tongue ruleth over them continually. See? There is one that is wise and teaches many and yet is unprofitable to himself. And the, and the overall point is in verse 18. Four manner of things appear, good and evil, li life and death, but the tongue ruleth over them continually. You see it? So as everything is in complete balance and in, in accordance with what the Most High set up. And that's just what it is. And you people out there trying, thinking that by showing toddlers playing together, that's going to bring some type of, you know, it's a vain vision of peace. Proverbs eleven twenty one. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. Who is the wicked? The wicked is Esau, the so-called white man. The earth was given into the hand of the wicked, and he covered the faces of the judges thereof. And no matter how much you make an outcry for peace in the world, or thinking that the Lord is going to look upon you in a favorable light because you come together with those whom you used to slay, it's not going to matter. And this scripture shows you plainly that the wicked is a whole group. Because what does it say in the second part? Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. That's a literal people. And the seed of the righteous is Jacob. And we're never going to come together with you damn devils, man. As a matter of fact, let me grab one more real quick. Right? Um, and, you, and really, in the spirit, you Edomites, you're always going to hate Jacob. And Jacob is always going to hate you. No matter how much you pay people off, it doesn't matter. This is what the Lord said. Amos 1 and 11, thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Why, Lord? Because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity. And his anger did tear perpetually. And he kept his wrath forever. Right. Esau is always going to be mad at Jacob. And for that, and for that, we're always going to be enemies. Not just for that, but for all the reasons we've been mentioning. But also, too, like we brought out, the Savior who's from the tribe of Judah is going to bring extreme prejudice and going to dispatch you with the sword, those of you from Edom, Esau. Nahum 1 verse 2, God is jealous and the Lord, Yahweh, revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. And he reserveth wrath for his enemies. You already seen it. Isaiah 63 and 1 on down describes that. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. And he will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. So there you go. And the wicked is Esau and the, and the Savior is pure righteousness. Let's play it for you again. As soon as we can get it to go. On. And it doesn't matter how much you play this, how much you want this to happen. It's never going to be. My friend, you are just adorable.
and really through the spirit Jacob running on past Esau we're gonna pass you in the kingdom of heaven and leave you in our rear view mirror as the wicked you see it's gonna be as though you never had existed I want to say all praise to the most high Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone enough respect to the brothers teaching the truth worldwide see you again with another lesson Lord willing Shalom